Thank you. So the title of my paper is Deleuze and Beckett Words Becoming Imperceptible. And the idea was uh, to present the research. I already contributed to a book, which I co-edited with Still Wilmer. He's present here. And it's uh, a book on the Lewis and Beckett. He is the flyer. <laughs> so, but, but to make this uh, task a little bit more complicated, uh, I decided to introduce uh, between Deleuze and Beckett, a third person that is uh, Gilbert Simondon. So I, I'll trace uh, certain Deleuzean concepts to Simondon and try to explain such uh, concepts as uh, becoming imperceptible, impersonal, and pre individual. And as you know, Deleuze's relationship with uh, Simondon is quite explicit and well-researched. Uh, on the other hand, Beckett's relationship with Simondon's philosophy is indirect and maybe can be traced to Henri Bergson. So in this paper, I will argue that uh, both Deleuze and, and Beckett and also Simondon defy uh, the premises of, of classical philosophy such as identity, unity, being, and individual, and replace them with the idea of becoming, or in, in Simondonian terms of individuation, and formulate a new philosophy of life as impersonal and, and pre-individual forms. So we can say that Deleuze and Simondon work on three strate strategic levels, uh, so first, that would be uh, they are replacing the notion of subject and subjectivity with the notion of pre-individual. Uh, second, they replace the notion of being with that of ontogenesis, or in the Lozian terms, becoming or becoming imperceptible. And third, they defy the logic of identity and replace it with uh, what Simon Don calls transduction. So uh, I argue that the same three strategies can be traced to Beckett's work. And Deleuze often refers to Beckett's text uh, to develop his own argument. Uh, so first chapter from individual to pre-individual. Uh, as you know, Deleuze and Batari's deconstruction of subjectivity is most explicitly expressed in Anti-Oedipus, where the schizo becomes the new paradigmatic example. And Deleuze and Batari analyze the schizophrenic production of intensities by invoking uh, literary examples, uh, namely from Artaud, Lawrence, and especially Beckett. And Deleuze and Guattari explain that desiring production develops following the three synthesis, uh, the connective synthesis, the disjunctive, and conjunctive. And Beckettian characters are introduced at every stage of this desiring production to demonstrate how this schizo methodology works. So the first stage is connective synthesis, which connects one desiring machine to another desiring machine. For example, Beckettian character as one desiring machine is connected to a bicycle as another machine and creates a new assemblage, uh, a bicycle machine. Or a mouth as a stone sucking, sucking machine is connected to the machine made up of stones. So all these connections increase the level of affectivity and desiring production, but eventually they end up at the stage of anti-production or the body without organs. And this is the stage of disjunctive synthesis, which disconnects one affective machine from another, but still keeps these differences together. And uh, as such, this disconnection is not exclusive, but inclusive. Uh, quote, everything divides but into itself, end quote. And it is precisely this disjunctive synthesis which keeps the Beckettian characters and events together. This is the plane of immanence or the body without organs, which creates schizophrenic or, uh, as they call, transpositional subject. As Deleuze and Guattari point out, quote, Malloy and Moran 
no longer designate persons, but singularities flocking from all sides, evanescent agents of production with a free dis disjunction, where differential positions persist in their entirety, they even take on a free quality, but they are all inhabited by a faceless and transpositional subject." End quote. So after this stage comes the third stage of conjunctive synthesis of conception, which again reconnects the disjoint qualities into intensive flow of becoming. And these new connections not only keep the constant level of intensity, but also engender unforeseen becomings. And here again, Beckett's work is the paradigmatic example, uh, quote. The promenades of Beckett's creatures are effective realities, but it is where the reality of matter has abandoned all extension. Just as the interior voyage has abandoned all forms and quality, hence for causing pure intensities coupled together almost unbearable, to radiate within and about intensities through which a nomadic subject passes. Here it is, a series of emotions and feelings as a consumption of intense quantities." End quote. So in other words, the conjunctive synthesis produces so-called pre-individual intensities which may be uh, res resemble center certain features of subjectivity, but in fact are more hexaites than individuals. So if anti-Oedipus dissolves subjectivity into disparate intensities and traits, uh, another book, A Thousand Plateau, dissolves subjectivity by introducing the, the notion uh, of the plane of immanence. And the plane of immanence is a plane of becoming or individuation, which necessarily leads towards becoming imperceptible. And to become imperceptible for the losing Guattari means to disorganize the body, to dismantle the system of signification, and to erase the subject and subjectivity. Uh, Deleuze and Guattari point out that becoming imperceptible leads not to, uh, let's say, nothingness or dissolution of the subject, but to the virtual state of the body which proceeds by the production of intensities in the medium of becoming and transformation. And this is precisely what uh, various Beckettian characters are striving for. Uh, to become imperceptible for men for them means to disorganize the body, dismantle the system of signification, to erase the subject and subjectivity. And as Saragin Drone points out, this is the status of the majority of Beckett's characters. If they are, what they are is not quite there. Some of his characters are literally absent in one way or another. Some of these characters are only body parts or the organs without bodies, like, for example, mouth in not eye. Uh, as Gendron, Gendron points out, uh, quote, Beckett's subjects greatly resemble what Deleuze calls the virtual object, an entity uh, what escapes determination and, in particular, humanization. They are like uh, Ada, May, V and Willy, uh, never quite there, never fully present. They are also never entirely absent. They have a property of being and not being, where they are, wherever they go, end quote. As such, Beckettian characters resemble pre-individual reality, which can be understood as a uh, as a container of uh, different potentialities. In other words, the process of individuation could proceed in different directions. And as you know, sometimes the Ketian characters go liquid and become like mud, and sometimes they are hard and contracted. Sometimes the characters resemble the consistency of an egg, 
or the real body without organs. Uh, quote, with two holes, no ma matter where to prevent it from bursting, for the consistency is more like that of mucilage, end quote. So the second strategy uh, connecting uh, Deleuze, Simondon, and Beckett is uh, the critique of being understood in terms of unity and identity. Uh, being, uh, says Simondon, is always more than unity and more than identity. It is ontogenesis or individuation which develops in the unpredictable direction. Uh, was Deleuze and Guattari following Simondon argue that ontology of being should replace by ontology of becoming? As Simondo explains, the ancient Greeks were forced to think stable beings because they had no knowledge of modern physics. And contemporary philosophy, already informed by the discoveries of physics and thermodynamics, has to reflect the genesis or becoming of being, which is understood in terms of metastability as pre-individual reality and transition phase as actual individuation. The metastable or pre-individual phase can be understood as a container of pot potentialities, which are all complementary. And the notion of complementar complementarity, which Simon Don takes from Niels Bohr, uh, reappears in Deleuze as the notion of virtuality. And in his last essay, Immanence, a Life, Deleuze refers to life as an indefinite quality, a virtuality which might do without any individuality or individual. And Deleuze points out, uh, quote, that life contains only virtuals. It is made up of virtualities, even singularities. What we call virtual is not something that lacks reality, but something that is engaged in a process of actualization following the plane that gives it its particular reality." Unquote. So all these events and singularities coexist on the plane of immanence and enjoy the full reality. In this sense, a life refers not to individuals and individualities, but uh, to a life as a singularity, as something that is impersonal. And Deleuze gives an example uh, of a very small child who has no individuality, but has a singularity, something which is more like individuation than a sign of individuality. The insistence of pre-individual complementarity can be found in Deleuze's essay, The Exhausted, dedicated to Beckett. Deleuze points out Beckett's obsession with possibilities, and having this in mind, Deleuze elaborates his own theory, theory of compossibility as a certain version of virtuality. And Deleuze describes the Beckettian character as someone who is exhausted in relation to potentiality. Quote, the tired person has merely exhausted the realization, whereas the exhausted person exhausts the whole of the possible. The tired person can no longer realize, but the exhausted person can no longer possibilize, end quote. So Deleuze points out that in tiredness, the possible is realized according to a certain plan or goal. One possibility is preferred and realized and another excluded. By contrast, in exhaustion, one possibility is not excluded for another, but all possibilities coexist with one another. As Deleuze points out, the disjunction subsists, but the disjoint terms are affirmed in their non-decomposable distance. The disjunction has become inclusive. Everything divides, but into itself, end quote. So this is the non-exclusive logic of pre-individual reality. Uh, let's say a certain problem which awaits solution in the form of individuation. In other words, this means that in pre-individual reality, all possibilities coexist in 
let's say, potentiality or virtuality. Uh, without any structure or plan, they are non-decomposable, which means coexisting in their potentiality. And Deleuze refers to different practices of exhaustion in Beckett, such as the combination of sucking stones in Molloy and the combination of five small biscuits in Murphy. He also refers to specific practices of exhaustion of language, words, and things, and also to the exhaustion of potentialities of space in quad. All these potentialities create the energetic potential which push, pushes the metastable system towards the process of individuation. So when Deleuze and Simon Don replace the ontology of being with continuous becoming, he has also to rethink his philosophical methodology. If being is not one and non-identical to itself, the principle of the excluded middle and the logic of identity do not apply to the process of ontogenesis. And a new notion emerges which possesses a multiple of aspects and domains of application, that of transduction. Uh, transduction means a transformation which expands progressively and at the same time structures and new arrangements. Thus transduction, or we can say becoming, realizes its double meaning. First, it is differentiation or becoming other. And second, it has a temporal duration or a transition phase which moves the process of ontogenesis from one phase to another. And the most simple example for Simon Don, the most simple example of transduction is crystal. Crystal grows and expands in all directions and each molecular layer serves as a basis for a newly constituted layer. Transduction describes not only the process of individuation, but also the condition of mind which follows the genesis of being. Thus, we can say that transduction is the quasi-operator or the dark precursor, initiating the process of ontogenesis and the condition of its perception. Uh, a very specific example of transduction, uh, we can see is the Deleuzean co concept of crystal image. Uh, just as in the Thousand Plateau, where Deleuze and Batari describe the opposition between uh, the organism and the body without organs, or between the plane of organization and the plane of immanence, in his film theory, Deleuze reveals, uh, uh, we can say, the same tension between the movement image and the time image. Deleuze describes the movement image as being organic or conventional visual regime, which can relate it to the notion of organism, whereas the time image is described as inorganic or crystalline, visual regime which can be imagined as the body without organs. It is an image which is simultaneously virtual and actual, composed of different and multiply time dimensions, and in the sense is constantly defacing and transforming itself and leaves the spectator in a state of mental indeterminacy. In the sense, we can claim that by inventing the crystalline image, Deleuze defies the logic of identity and tries to invent, uh, let's say, a transductive image or an image which is constantly changing and differentiating. Deleuze also calls it the time image stressing its temporal or ontogenetic dimension. And what is interesting for my research is that in order to leave uh, the, movement, the movement image behind, uh, based on the logic of identity, Deleuze again refers to Beckett's film and uses it as a reverse proof, demonstrating that which filming conventions should be abandoned. 
And Deleuze interprets Beckett's film as an instance of becoming imperceptible and argues that we can abandon the logic of, of identity and finally get rid uh, uh, ourselves from ourselves by extinguishing the action image, perception image, and affection image. This is precisely what Beckett's film does. As, as you know, the central character, played by Buster Keaton, gradually gets rid of action, perception of other people, and finally of his own self-perception. In other words, in film, Beckett gradually renounces organism, signification, and subjectivity in order to create the body without organs or the crystalline image. As this Deleuze explains, at the end of Beckett's film, after all possible amputations, quote, the room has lost its partitions and releases an atom into the luminous void, an impersonal yet singular atom that no longer has a self by which it might distinguish itself from or merge with others, becoming imperceptible is life attaining to a cosmic or spiritual lapping, end quote. In this sense, the crystalline transduction augments the images. Maybe. I have two sentences to finish. <laughs> yeah. So I can uh, finish and we can have discussion in the dark. Yes, <laughs> the dark precursor. <laughs> <laughs> so the crystalline transduction augments the images which are pre-individual, impersonal, and are subjective. <laughs> and the crystalline transduction helps to get rid of perception and self-perception, empty space both of objects and subjects. As Deleuze points out, no matter whether someone is living nor, or not, is dead or alive, the potentiality of life forces uh, goes on and following the principle of individuation or ontogenesis. Thank you. <laughs> Dark questions. Dark questions or more? Let's <laughs> talk. <laughs> I don't know, it's not so bright. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, does the concept of individuation accept such a thing as an endless becoming? Sorry, can you repeat that? Does the concept of individuation accept such a thing of uh, yeah, we can say that individuation or ontogenesis, and Simon Don uses these terms in synonymical, synonymous way, uh, is it's, it's an endless process, and, and he thinks that if we are talking about entities or identities, uh, these are only uh, frozen moments uh, which we uh, try to fix. to get these frozen moments of identity because it's more easier for us to, to think about uh, things and persons and, and nature and technicity and everything. 
So it's like the habit of, of our mind to, to have this identities based on the logic of identity. You know? But something is and or, or, or is not. Mm-hmm. Hmm, interesting, yeah. Well, individuation and ontogenesis, as I said, is, is uh, this, Simondon uses these terms in synonymous way, and, and it's like, uh, you know, an endless process which is uh, continuing, you know, in pre- having different phases, which we call transition phases. So if we think, if these phases uh, constitute an event, well, Simon Don is, is not speaking about events in, in the same term as Deleuze or, for example, Badiou. But uh, uh, Simon Don speaks about this um, intensive uh, uh, qualitative changes, then one phase transforms into another phase. For example, water, which is liquid, under certain circumstances, transforms either into gas or into solid, solid material, for example, ice piece. So this phase, this change or trans- transition phase is, is uh, a qualitative change from one, one uh, condition to another. I think uh, the event in, in Deleuze, uh, when he uh, describes, for example, this sense event is, is something different, or, or political event in, uh, in Badiou's sense. But, but of course, yeah, we can maybe draw some similarities and think that, uh, for example, uh, Delanda, I think, is doing this thing when he makes this comparison between, uh, you know, minerals, uh, animals, and, and societies. And he says, under certain condition, the system is undergoing a change. For example, when a society accumulates a certain amount of goods uh, or money, it can tr- be transformed from one type of society into another type of society. And this is event or, or this qualitative change. And what is important in Simon Don is this uh, analogical paradigmatism we talked uh, yesterday. The, the idea that you can think uh, about uh, different paradigms, like uh, geological paradigm or, or vitalist paradigm or social paradigm on the, uh, using the same methodology. So I think that's striking. And it creates kind of ontological continuance. Well, there is a question. It was great. Thanks so much. I have a question. Could this could this what you're saying about ontogenesis and individuation? Could this be also correlated with the notion of you know some sort of generative threshold? Yes, I, I believe that what Simon Don calls ontogenesis, it's, it's almost the same that the losing what I recall becoming. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, and it's constant, you know, merging of. It's not that uh, there is one identity and it's becoming another, but it's constant transformation, constant becoming. I don't know if I answered. Yeah, it's great. I also, I noticed this, for example, in the process later, uh, he uh, has the notion of, uh, like, motive of a fall in, in those paintings. That's mm. Yeah, and what is interesting that Deleuze, both Simon Dom and Deleuze and Batory are, are very keen mm, to criticize the holomorphic model, that there is a matter and a form, and identities could be formed uh, from and then reformed to another identity. But what Deleuze says, he says that we cannot separate matter and form, and we can talk only about matter forces which have this uh, how to say form in itself and 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 this notion comes I, I think from Bacon books matter force or matter energy yeah 